Magandang umaga po muli sa ating lahat. Ako po ay nagagalak na kayo ay makita po muli at makasama sa ating bread and breakfast. Ito po ang inyong lingkod, Pastor Maricar, ng 611 Bread of Life, Manila. At ako po ay makakasama nyo sa ating pabubulay-bulay ng salita ng Panginoon. At sa araw na ito, tayo po ay magpapatuloy sa ating pag-aaral ng Book of John. And now we come to the end of this chapter. But we know that God has in store still a lot of things for us dito po sa huling chapter ng Gospel of John. And so, samahan niyo po ako and let us be excited, I pray. And I encourage each one of you to study with us and prepare your Bibles and your notebooks and your ballpens as we receive together the Word of God sa araw na ito. And so in here, in the Gospel of John, chapter 21, Uh, before this incident happened, nais ko lamang po na i-share sa bawat isa sa atin ano po yung sitwasyon ng mga disipulo ng Painong Jesus noong ito ay nangyari. Because in the previous chapter, dito po natin makikita that the people of God has been very anxious and they were very fearful. Actually, bago po nagpakita muli ang Painoon sa chapter 21, ay tatlong beses na po siya nagpakita sa kanyang mga disipulo, which is in chapter 20. Nagpakita po siya kay Mary, nagpakita po siya sa kanyang disipulo, And even yung wala pa po si Thomas, and even the time na meron na po si Thomas. And in here we see that Jesus has revealed Himself for many times sa kanyang mga disciples bago po itong incident sa chapter 21. But we need to understand what is the feeling of His disciples during this season. And it was the season of, they were really very frustrated, they were very sad, and they have deep fear in their hearts. Kasi nga po, nawala na po ang kanilang master, and Jesus has died. He, he died on the cross. And now, as a disciple of Jesus, they were really sad and very lonely. They were very fearful because now, they, everyone is looking for them. And so they have to lock themselves in the upper room, lock themselves in a room na kung saan po they really shut themselves away from the outside world. At dito pa makita natin na ganun na lamang po ang kanilang takot because they really, they, they, they really isolated themselves and that Jesus just came to them, you know, through the walls. At ni-reveal po ng Pino na kanyang sarili. At makita po natin at the end of chapter 20, sabi po dito, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of disciples which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in His name. At ito po yung nais po iparating ng Panginoong Jesus. That in believing in Him, we will not have fear but have life. At patuloy pong ina-encourage ng Painong Yesus sa kanyang mga disciple to continue believe in Him and have faith and do not fear. But we come in chapter 21, the disciples still do not understand what Jesus is saying. And still they were enveloped and overwhelmed by their fear. Kung dati po yung fear nila in chapter 20, it's because they fear for their life in a way that the people might go after them and persecute them. So that was their previous fear. But now in chapter 21, they also, they also fear for their life but this time for the needs na kailangan po nila. At makita po natin in chapter 21, how Jesus has revealed himself once again to his disciples. So dito po, in verse 1, sabi ito, Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathanael from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. And in verse 3, he says, I'm going to fish. Simon Peter told them, and they said, We'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Now, the title of our teaching for today is 
follow Jesus in discipleship. Now, I believe every one of us is called to be a leader. And in some point of our lives, God is, is raising and will raise us up to, to lead, whether it be your family, whether it be your cell member, or maybe you are a pastor. And I believe there are a lot of difficulties and challenges that we experience and we face. But today, let us see on how Jesus led his disciples, how he continued to disciple his followers, even at the end, despite all the struggles and weaknesses of his people. At ito po ang ating pong titingnan. And let's see, wala na pong ibang pwedeng magturo po sa atin ng the best way of leadership. But Jesus, who himself is our great disciple. So dito po, dahil po sa fear ni Peter, he went back into fishing. Hindi lang po niya pinagkanulo, hindi lang po niya iniwan sa ere ang Panginoong Jesus. But the worst thing is that he left the very calling that he had. He left whatever God has given to him. He left it all and he went back to his original identity, original work, which is to be a fisher of fish instead of a fisher of man. At dito po, nagtawag pa po siya ng kanyang mga kasama. And why? Why? We need to understand. Bakit po ganito? It's, it's because the people of Jesus, the disciples of Jesus, were also worrying about what the, the food that they have to eat and their provision for every day, especially they are also family men. Well, in the past, they have been dependent to Jesus because Jesus has been providing for all their needs. But this time, the master is not with them anymore. And so... What they thought is that they have to do their own way to find fish, to find provision for themselves. And so, sabi po dito, even the other disciples followed Peter. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Now for someone who was very, very, you would imagine how how discouraged they were. You see how weary and how tired they were spiritually physically and mentally you know they've toiled for the whole night but they have not got anything and so the next day early in the morning in verse 4 jesus stood on the shore but the disciples did not realize that it was jesus he called out to them friends haven't you any fish no they answered verse 6 he said throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some when they did, they were unable to hold the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him and jumped into the water. Now, first point, how could we follow Jesus in discipleship? Very importantly, we need to value relationship before ministry. It was in the trying times of these disciples that once again Jesus appeared to them but when Jesus appeared to them you know after he left like after he died you know as a as, as a discipler who has given everything he's given your life you laid out everything for your disciples you've done your best to teach them and pass on whatever gifts whatever anointing that you can give to them but at the end you will find your disciples going back to their previous way or state of life. At iniwan po nila lahat, lahat po ng bilin ninyo ay nakalimutan po nila and they started to go back on their way, yung dati pong sila. And this is the situation during this time. Jesus is about to leave earth. But then even at the end, nakita po niya yung mga disciples niya full of weakness, full of of, of the, their fleshly needs. They left the ministry because they really have the needs, their, 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 their physical needs. And so they left everything and they went back. Dun po sa dati po nilang ginagawa. And you see, on those times, what would you feel? But look at Jesus. When he saw the struggle of his disciples, he cared for them. That he even went to the shore to help them and to provide for their need. And so, nung nag-dinirect pa ng Painong Jesus ang kanyang mga disciples, the disciples, they caught a lot of fish. And 
in here makita po natin ang Panginoon without resentment, without anger, He went to His disciples to rescue them. Hindi po siya dumating. Sabi po niya, sabi niya po dito, nung nagkita po ang Panginoong Jesus at ang kanyang mga disciples sa Pampang. You know, in verse 9, it's such a sweet gesture ng Panginoong Jesus that He prepared a call and a fish for them. In verse 9, sabi dito, When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals, there with fish on it and some bread. Nung muli po ay na-encounter nilang Panginoong Yesus, hindi po sila pinagalitan, hindi po sila siningil ng Panginoon, Why are you here? Bakit ninyo iniwan yung mga binilin ko sa inyo? Bakit tinalikuran nyo ako nung ako ay nasa Cruz ng Colbar? Hindi, hindi po siya ganun. And what he did was, with compassion, he appeared in the very time of struggle na kanyang mga disciples. He cared for them. He loved them. And he even gave them provision through the fish. And he even fed them through the f- dun po sa nakaprepare na breakfast. And sabi po ng Painan, come, have breakfast with me. And you would imagine, you would describe yung heart ng Panginoon on how he he told this. Yung tipong parang hopeless ang kanyang mga disciples. It seems like you know, it's very discouraging for the Lord Jesus. But because of his grace and compassion, because of his love, he valued relationship before ministry. Hindi po niya sinabing, you should not be here. You should be there doing the work of the Father, doing my work, continuing my legacy. But you know, he did not look at the ministry. But he cared more for his disciples. He knew the very situation. Yung heart na kanyang mga disciples. He accepted them, understand the weaknesses na kanyang mga disciples. He cared for their needs and he provided for them. At patuloy po na hindi po siya nag-give up. Patuloy po siya na nampalataya at naniwala sa kanyang mga disciples. And that this is the heart of a disciple, having the heart of a father. Minsan po kasi sa ating buhay, we misunderstood. Sometimes people, even pastors like us, we commit these mistakes that we disciple for the sake of the ministry. We want to raise up people so that more people can work on the ministry. But this is the wrong way. The truth is relationship goes first before ministry. Why we minister is because of relationship. Without people, everything that we do is nothing. Yeah, And we need to always look at our people. Marami din pong mga magulang, you know, they, they work so hard. At nakalimutan na po nila ang kanilang relasyon sa kanyang mga pamilya. Sa kanilang mga pamilya. And they forgot what is very important, which is relationship. And sometimes, we look so much on the achievement of people rather than knowing how they feel, knowing their struggle. Minsan, na lang po natin yung mga gawa nila. Tinitingnan lamang po natin kung ano yung na-achieve nila. And sometimes it's very discouraging. You know, because we are just looking of the results. But in here, makita po natin kung paano mag-disciple, kung paano po Itinayo ng Panginoong Yesus sa kanyang mga disciples. First is He cares for their needs more than what they are doing for the ministry. And so, makita po natin, Jesus fed them. Jesus satisfied their needs. Jesus even healed them, comforted them. Hindi po niya basta iniwan na kanyang mga disciples na ganun na lamang. But even till the end, Jesus revealed Himself and continue to pastor them. At makita po natin dito that Jesus is indeed a good God. He gave them the bread. He gave them the fish. And He once again reminded them that He is God. That how He provided the 5,000 people through these five loaves and two fishes. 
Jesus is telling his disciples, I am willing, I am able to provide for you. Do not fear. And he once again encouraged the downhearted disciples to walk by faith, to continually walk by faith, satisfying the needs of our members, satisfying the needs of our disciples doesn't mean we need to always give them food physical food doesn't mean we need to give everything that they need but the most important thing is that how we could lead them and teach them to live by faith and to walk by faith because many of them you know sometimes they struggle in their christian life because of one thing money their needs there are times that we are tempted, even if we are working full-time, we are tempted to go on business. We go and go back, you know, because in the, in, in the ministry, we, we, we don't receive much of a salary or a love gift, like how we do and receive from our marketplace. And sometimes, as a full-time worker, we have this thought of, but, but what if babalik na lang ako? But you see, as a disciple, we need to know what they feel. We need to know what is inside them so that we can minister to them. We don't just get angry. We don't just, you know, compare them or we don't just simply judge them. But let us, you know, encourage them by faith to follow God like how we did. And in here, makita po natin, when we follow Jesus in our lives, he will surely prepare everything for us. He will surely have compassion on us and provide for all we need. That's why they have and we have to be encouraged, even for us as a discipler, you know. And so in here, makita po natin na patuloy lang po tayo sa pagdi-disciple sa kanila. And let us deal more of how they feel their emotions because many of them are hurt when people come to us and they are filled with a lot of weaknesses makita natin na maraming tao may ayaw sa kanila we as Christians we as people of God as leaders of God we need to have this compassion to continually love them and disciple them bring them in in the cell group bring them in in the church no matter how difficult they are maybe no matter how they reject you no matter how they ignore you or hurt you as their discipler we continue to love them and disciple them and we will never give up on them just like how jesus did not give up on us so value relationship before ministry second is in verse 15 down to verse 19 disciple as a respond to Jesus love why we need to understand why we are doing discipleship why do we have to lead why do we have to care for the people down us it is because it is a response to the love of Jesus among us. So sabi po dito, when they were conversing in the breakfast meeting, sabi po ng Panginoong Jesus, Simon, son of John, he turned to Peter and he said, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? And Peter said, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. At dito po sa conversation na ito, I really felt the heart of Jesus as a disciple. He opened his heart to his disciples. At tinanong po niya si Peter, Peter, mahal mo ba ako? Kesa sa mga bagay na ito. And he's speaking about the fish. He's speaking about the physical needs that Peter has. The, the work that he has. It means the family that he has. And he is asking him, Peter, do you love me more than this? And Peter, who's always been confident, 
and who've always been so fast in, in, in answering without thinking. He said, yes, Lord. Yes, it might be true. He loved Jesus. But what Jesus is asking is, do you love me as I love you? Willing to lay down your life for me? Willing to sacrifice everything? This food, your family? Are you willing to put me first more than anything? And Peter says in the second time, I love you. You know that. But still he didn't understand. Because Peter is thinking he loves Jesus as a friend. But the love that Jesus is asking is an agape love. It is a love that knows no boundary. It's a love that is unlimited. And Peter thinks, yes, I love you. But he forgot. Na iniwan po niyang painong Jesus. He forgot. He went back to fishing and left everything. Yung calling po niya. So he says, I love you. But at the third time, Jesus again asked him, Do you love me? At dito na po, nag-grieve si Peter. And he then realized that he cannot love Jesus like how Jesus loved him. So sa uli sabi po niya, Mahal kita, Painong Jesus. Alam mo lang. But he was really grieved. Why? Because he knew. He left Jesus on the cross. At dinenay pa po niya ito. Minsan po, we say, I love you. And we say these words of love. Na minsan di po natin naiintindihan. We are just, ang alam lang po natin is the shallow meaning of love. And it's easy for us to say it but not mean it. But in discipleship, we have, we need to have this. Sabi po ng Painong Jesus, Peter, kung mahal mo ako, for three times, you have to feed my lambs. You have to tend my sheep. You have to take care of the sheep na iniwan ko sa inyo. And this is when Peter begin to understand he did not love Jesus that much because he left. He left the ministry. He left the people. But this is what Jesus is telling us. If we want, we disciple because we love Jesus. We disciple as a response to his love. Why we continue to take care of other people? Why we continue to have compassion in them? We never give up on them. Because we first are being loved by God. We felt the love of Jesus. And this is how we can and we need to respond to Jesus' love. It's true discipleship. It is when we care for others. It is when we are willing to lay down our lives to others. And even for my life, I believe this is what gave the purpose in my life. Dati po, I was very selfish. Lahat po ng plano ko sa buhay, lahat ng pangarap ko is all directed to me. Everything that what everything that would benefit me, everything that would make me rich, make me as a better person. But then when I received the calling from Jesus, it changed my life totally. When I felt and received the love of Jesus, it changed all my plans. It changed the direction of my life. And in here, dun ko lamang po unti, unti na at dun ko lamang po na realize that this is one of the greatest calling to respond in the love of God through discipleship. So yun po ang sinasabi ng Painoon dito. We are willing to lay down ourselves for them. We are willing to disciple God's people here on earth. Pastor them. If you are in a leadership, you are willing to lead them in the right way, willing to care for everything that they need and satisfy them, even to give our lives for them. And this is what Jesus is saying. Kaya naman po, paulit-ulit po niyang sinabihan si Peter. And so sabi po niya dito, if we love him, we need to feed his sheep. It's not just doing the ministry, but discipleship. 
Cell grouping is very important to Jesus. He really cares so much of discipleship because this is what God has given to us even before He left. Sabi po niya, go into all the earth and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is discipleship. And so, we have to do discipleship up out of love, out of the love of Jesus. We don't do it on our own strength. We don't do it because someone told us to do it. We don't do it because we are forced by our cell leaders or by our pastors. They can encourage us. They will tell us to go and disciple. Yes, because they are the mouthpiece of God for us. But why? what is the real root and the reason why we disciple people? Not because we benefit from them. Not because we can be called as a leader. Meron pong sumusunod sa atin. But because this is our way to respond to the love of Jesus. So brothers and sisters, let us show our love to Jesus through discipleship. And the last point is follow God and focus on Him. How we do our discipleship is, don't, is we don't compare. And we just set our eyes on Jesus. We set our eyes on the calling that Jesus has given us. Like in verse 20 down to the last verses. In verse 25. Si Peter nung nakita po niya. Si John. Na kung saan po they tagged him as, as a man who has been loved by God. Nandun po yung jealousy. Yung comparison ni Peter. And then Peter said, eh Lord, paano, paano po si John? Paano po naman ito? Parang, ano sinasabi po niya? Anong gagawin niyo po sa kanya? Anong magiging future niya? But Jesus was talking to him. But Peter is not focusing on Jesus. He has a lot of focus. Kaya nga hindi niya na-identify ang Painong Jesus nung una. Because he's so busy with a lot of things. Busy with his work. Busy with his all the burden and cares in life. At ito pa, busy po siya sa iba. Now he's always looking at others. But you see, when we are being called by God, when Jesus raises up for the ministry, for discipleship, we need to follow God and focus on Him. Not on our achievements, not on the achievement of people. We should not compare our work, compare our, the results of our work to other people. Because if we do that, it's easy for us to be discouraged. It's easy for us to be out of focus. But what God is saying is that this is the way of discipleship ng Painong Jesus. As he followed God and focused his father in his discipleship, kahit gaano man po kahirap ang naranasan po niya, Sa mundong ibabaw. He was able to make it even to the point of death. Bakit? He did not look at himself. But he looked at his father. He focused on his father. On how he has faith on the father that the father will prosper his work. That the father will prepare everything and provide for his ministry. That the Lord God will glorify him in the ministry that he, is, he has here on earth. And the same thing that we need to learn from Jesus. Do not follow the ways of Peter, which is the ways of men. We always look at others and compare. But Jesus is telling us, just follow me. Follow me. Two times he said, follow me. In verse 22, sabi po niya dito, If I want him to remain alive, alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. The Lord says, you must follow me. And this is, this is what He wants us to do. As we continue to disciple, do it as an act of love for Jesus, as a response to His love. And when we do it, do it with all our hearts, pleasing Jesus, not pleasing men, not even to please ourselves or please our pastors or our disciples. But we do it to please Jesus in our lives. Brothers and sisters, we have a lot of weaknesses. Whether we are disciples, we are leaders, or we are followers. Let us learn from Peter and Jesus. Kung paano po yung relationship nila. As humans, we will always have a lot of weaknesses. But believed that Jesus is calling us. 
No matter how is what, no matter what is our weaknesses, our failures, whatever is our difficulties right now, God can raise us up. God can raise us up. He has high hopes po sa atin. He is not looking, He is not looking down on us. But He has high dreams for us. At kaya niya po tayong itayo. Whatever is our weakness, whether it be to manage people, whether it be personal problems, the Lord says, whatever it may be, Jesus accepted us. He ac Jesus accepted us. He has faith in us. And He can raise us up. Itong titer na ito, na nakita po natin, ang dami po niyang weaknesses. But look in the next chapter, in the next book of Acts, kung gaano po siya itinayo ng Panginoon. And this is the kind of discipleship that we have in the Lord. Do not look and judge people according to their weakness. But we need to embrace them. We need to disciple them no matter who they are, ano man po yung mga kakulangan sa kanila. We understand them and we love them all the more. And let us not give up to speak in their lives, transform their lives, and raise them up for the ministry of God. So yan lamang po ang aking sharing. And so now we, we pray, and I just want to pray for each one of you. Father, we thank you that no matter is our weakness, no matter how much we failed in, the, in our lives in the past, and no matter what are the things that we cannot do today, no matter how much we fail you, Father, we thank you that you continue to persist. You continue to embrace us and accept us. And you are willing to take us, Father, in your kingdom and to raise us up as you continually transform us. We thank you for there is no one who loves us more than how you do it. Lord, I pray na kami man din po, we could understand this love. We could respond this love in faith. We could respond to your love, Father, through having compassion to the people around us. Help us to love God. Help us to respond to your love by loving other people. To continue in our discipleship, that we continue, God, to believe and trust people. Father, I pray that may you use us as a vessel of love, as a vessel, God, that your more people will come to you, more people will come to know you, and that they will have this transformed life. Lord, I pray right now for every pastor, for every disciples or disciples, Panginoon, every leaders, whether they are in the government, whether they are leading a church or in their family. Lord, I pray na ikaw po ang maglagay ng priority sa kanila, that they will prioritize relationship before ministry and that may your way be their way father because it's the only way i pray that you give us more of your love more of your grace more of your patience father that we can love our our members we can love them no matter is their weakness just like how you have loved us father i thank you i bless everyone even for us lord as your followers Panginoon, maging din po kami. Help us to believe by faith, to follow you. As we follow you, Panginoon, alam po namin na ikaw, Panginoon, ang magpaprovide ng lahat ng aming pangailangan. Ikaw, Panginoon, ang sasama po sa amin at kailanman hindi po kayo magpukulang. Lord, we thank you and I bless everyone na sumama po sa akin sa araw na ito. Hayaan mo, Panginoon, na yung pagpapala ay mapasa kanila at marami pa pong mga bagay, magagandang bagay ang maranasan nila kasama ka. Panginoon, I bless them and this we pray in Jesus mighty name Amen and Amen So God bless po sa lahat and I hope to see you tomorrow again for our bread and breakfast God bless po